Hello everyone. So today I'm going to be doing a brand and product focused film. And this film shall come secondary in my series of The Palest Shade, where I find and source the very palest shade within a collection and we shall see if it really is as pale as they proclaim. And today I'm going to be focusing on the recently released Full Filter Foundation by Huda Beauty. And I shall be applying and reviewing the Full Filter Foundation in the lightest, palest shade, Milkshake. For those of you who might not be aware, Huda Beauty is the work of Huda Katan, who is an online social phenomena, makeup artist, beauty guru, beauty blogger, very accomplished. And not that many years ago, she launched her own range of makeup accessories and has gradually built on top of that to the most recent release of her very first foundation. Now, I purchased this yesterday after I'd been to the hair salon. I had had more dead ends than the road to nowhere. So they needed to go, and after I was done with the hair wizard, I then aggressed on to Harrods in London. Now, I believe that Selfridges is also now a stockist of Huda Beauty, but I think that is a recent addition, for Harrods I know has carried her line for quite some time now. And I purchased two products from Huda Beauty, and this is the packaging that it comes in, quite slick. It's simple, it's slick, and it's slightly feminine. I quite like what they've done with this metallic pink shade. And of course, it gradients from dark to light at the bottom. And when you turn to the top, you can see it has the shade written here. The shade that I've purchased is the lightest shade from the range, and it is in the shade Milkshake 100B. Now, the second product that I also purchased from Huda Beauty was one of the liquid matte lipsticks. And this one is in the shade Bombshell. Now, I absolutely love this color. I tried it on. As soon as I saw its title, I knew it had been designed for me. And some of you might be familiar. You always see people doing this with the products on Instagram. And Huda also has eyelashes that have the eyes in the front of them. And you always see people putting them there. So the packaging is quite fun and interactive. And all the details are listed on the packaging. And when you take it out of the box, this is what it looks like. It's square. It has a black top and it gradients from dark to light. It's plastic, it isn't glass. And when I first saw this, I thought it might look a little bit inexpensive. However, when I saw it in person and I actually have touched it and seen it, I think it looks fantastic and it feels fantastic as well. It's definitely a very sturdy product. And I wasn't initially quite sure about the black gradiating to light first of all, but actually seeing it in person, it looks really good. And when you turn to the bottom as well, there's a black sticker with information on the bottom. And because it's black around here, it's seamless. And it's got quite a sturdy cap. You have to kind of get a pull. And once you take that off, you have this pump with this gunmetal chrome finish to the lower part of the pump, which I also think is a pleasant feature. A sample of the Huda Beauty primer also came held within the box. Now, I don't know if that'll be the case for all of the products. It might be because it's just recently launched. That's certainly complimentary, but I'm not going to be using this today. I'm going to use my own priming technique. So today I have gone in with my absolute favorite and go-to moisturizer, La Creme Concentrate, and I've applied quite a liberal amount of that to the skin. As you can see at the moment, my own skin isn't in the greatest form, which in fact would be very useful when giving us clearance as to how decent the level of coverage is with this foundation. Of course, we will build up the product, but having skin that's not quite perfect can really serve as being very useful when examining the capabilities of a foundation. So I've applied a little bit of that to my spatula and on first impressions, it actually looks quite fair. I shall be very surprised if it is a decent match. So first impressions, that is definitely light so far. We'll have to see if it oxidizes, but I am quite impressed actually, because I wasn't expecting it to be this light on first application. And what I like about it is, it has this beautiful scent to it. It's very beautifully scented. And it's almost got a fatty texture. I know that might sound strange, but some foundations have this either liquid and then they dry and they cling to the skin. But this one has a almost bounciness to it. I really like it. So my technique for applying foundation is just slap it on and hope for the best. But what I do is I like to apply it with a brush first of all, and then I buff and stipple everything into place so that I can get a truly seamless finish. I'm going to take that quite far up to the eye and a little bit under the brow. I shall go back in and cut in with that later, of course. Now it's definitely covering my redness quite well. I don't know if the product will need set, so I'm trying to work as fast as I possibly can with it so that I can buff it into place just in case it does require setting. And to apply this foundation, I'm using a Space NK foundation brush. 
I'm taking that down onto the neck so that we can establish a seamless gradient. And of course, I've already gone in and applied eyebrows. I used a Dermacolor Cream Concealer, but I'm going to have to go back in in a little while to recut them just to make sure that everything's seamless. And I'm now going to go in and correct the texture with a Phyllis CB2 brush. And I'm just dabbing that onto the skin and buffing it into the areas that are porous. Now it's a little bit on the yellow side, but that's not a problem. Now I'm finding this formula really weird. It's almost like it's setting into place, yet it's not going quite matte. It's still slightly sticky, yet it's set into place. So that's one layer applied. I don't think it will oxidize. Given the texture of the formulation, I'm not sure that it will oxidize substantially. It might, we should give it time, but I'm actually going to go in and apply an additional coat of coverage, just to areas that I believe need it. Overall though, it has given me relatively good coverage. My opinion so far is I actually quite like it. I do think I will need to powder it though, because even though it does it's almost dry, it's drying quite slowly, I can't feel it setting. So I think I will need to powder it, because I do tend to find that when I apply these types of foundations that don't dry matte on their own, they do require a little bit of powder, certainly on the forehead. So I've allowed this to sit and to settle into the skin for some time now. I'm not going to wait any further before going in with a second coat. So what I'm going to do with the second coat is to actually just stipple it onto the areas that I feel need greater coverage, like my chin. Because if I went back in with the foundation brush from before, it would disturb what we've already applied. When I was applying this, I actually thought this, that you get better coverage when you stipple the product on rather than going in with the foundation brush. So I don't think I will be trying that technique with the regular foundation brush again. I'd actually describe this shade as not being that far off, a slightly more yellow-based version of the Kat Von D Light 42 foundation. It, I would say it's almost between Light 42 and Light 41. I don't have Light 41 to hand with me at the moment, but I would say it's around that mark so far. We shall see if it oxidizes, but it is definitely lighter than a MAC Cosmetics NW or NC15 by a long shot, as well as being lighter than NW10. Possibly W10 full coverage. I think I would say it's a little lighter than that as well. Now, the only thing that I find about pale foundations is that when you apply them and put them on, they do tend to look really good. They look really pale and they look like a match. Then about an hour later, once they've oxidized, your face starts to appear as if though you've smeared lurid neon manure around it. So it can be really very disappointing, but I'm willing to give this foundation the benefit of the doubt. But I definitely think I will go in and powder. A great technique that I would recommend, and perhaps in this foundation, if you have this issue that I am having, I have this issue with almost most foundations regardless, where you have slight lines, go back in and stipple over them. And then as soon as you've done that, powder on top of them. So what you apply is locked in place. So over the course of the day, fine lines are less likely to appear or to become accentuated because you have locked and set the foundation in a formation that encourages finer lines to appear more diminutive to the eye. So that is the foundation applied to the level in which that I want to apply it to. It's actually given me marvelous coverage. I quite like it so far. I'm hoping that it won't oxidize as this shade seems to be very ideal. But I'm going to go in and apply concealer to the areas that need pinpoint concealing, as well as under eye color correction and under eye concealer, as well as cutting around the eyebrows, just to neaten everything off. And to color correct, I'm going to use this Dermacolor Concealer, which is a pastel salmon. I've also done another film on my channel where I demonstrate how to color correct for the very palest of skin. And I shall definitely leave the applicable link to that within the description of this film. One thing that I think is very important to remember when testing out other foundations is to see how well they merge and blend with other formulations. So I'm just applying my color corrector, which is a Dermacolor Cream Concealer, just to the areas that require it. And what I mean by testing is to see how much drag you get on the product to see if any of the foundation that you've applied before starts to move or whether it blends and merges and melts with the product that you're applying on top. Of course, these are both emollient formulations, so you're not likely to get that much drag. With the color correction now applied, I'm then going to go in with the Kat Von D Locker Concealer in the shade L1 Neutral. A few little dots a little around the nose and a little bit in the center there and just really start to stipple that into place. 
And the main reason that I apply concealer on top of the color corrector, I only actually apply quite a thin layer, even though it looks like I apply quite a lot, is just to reduce the peachness of the color corrector. I'm now going to go in and set just under eyes, first of all, with this Laura Mercier Universal Invisible Setting Powder. And it is a very fine, refined formula. And then for the rest of the face, I'm going to set it through with a very light layer of the Dermacolor Fixing Powder in the shade P1. So that's the foundation set through. And then I'm going to go back in and correct my eyebrows, apply a little bit of contour, blusher, highlighter, eyeshadow, mascara, and then we shall apply the lipstick. So I've further gone in and applied some highlighter, contour, blusher, eyeshadow, mascara, and a set of false eyelashes. So far, it's oxidized only a tiny, tiny, teensy, tiny bit. But I very much noticed a color change when I added the powder. I noticed it darkened ever so slightly when I added a little bit of powder. So I would make the recommendation, if you are very fair, try to use a setting powder that's slightly whitening, something that has a little bit of white pigment in it. That may be of benefit if you have this kind of issue with foundations. I tend to find there's a lot actually. Once you powder a foundation, it does look slightly darker. But overall, it didn't need a lot of powder. And I had, of course, applied quite a lot of foundation to get a very strong coverage. But I actually think this foundation would be absolutely perfect for something that's either everyday or building up to something that is quite full on as I have done today. The formula is quite versatile and I would say it's quite usable. But now I'm going to go in with Huda Beauty's liquid lipstick in the shade Bombshell. I think the packaging is very attractive, but you just slide it down or up, however you prefer. It comes out of its box like that. Again, this is plastic. It's a smoky plastic, but it's a sophisticated kind of plastic. It feels almost like glass. Certainly if it was colder and slightly heavier, I would presume it was glass. And I'm just going to apply this directly to the lips. This shade is almost a match, a slightly more warmer version than my natural lip color. Formula is very thin in texture, yet I'm getting quite a good coverage with it. I'm just going to use this to overdraw the lips ever so slightly. So that more or less completes the look. I definitely really like this foundation. Having worked with it and learned the formula, it is definitely a pale foundation solution. There's no doubt about that. I think it would rank at the similar level as the Kat Von D Light 42. Not quite as light as Light 41, but very near that shade. So the Huda Beauty Four Filter Foundation in the shade Milkshake is definitely a foundation solution suited for the very palest of skin tones. I can confirm that. It has oxidized on me tiny little bit, but it isn't something I would consider to be unwearable. So I definitely salute it and confirm it to be a pale formulation. Comparatively, I'd rank it in a similar alignment with Kat Von D Locker Foundation Light 42. It is not quite as light as the Light 41, but it doesn't have the same depth as the Light 42, so it's very near those two colors. It is certainly way lighter than the Fenty Beauty Pro Filter Foundation in the shade 100. I have no doubt about that. I would say this foundation has an ambiguous finish. You can apply a light amount of it, a medium amount of it, and build it up to a full coverage as I have done, but I think it would look most flattering when done as a light to medium or medium to full. I will definitely be wearing this, probably as a everyday foundation or something that I want to wear when I want my skin to look polished, but still quite soft and natural. I think it has a great texture and it's a great color. I'm pleasantly surprised and quite pleased that it has turned out to be quite a good foundation. I actually really like the shade as well. It's almost a neutral, slightly yellower tone foundation, which I, I prefer actually because I find a lot of the foundations that you see on the market are usually oversaturated with pink. They end up looking really salmony on the skin. The kind of pale skin I have, the undertone is actually blue. So most commonly neutral tone foundations are the most flattering. And regarding the Huda Beauty Liquid Matte Lipstick in the shade Bombshell, it's a slightly deeper, slightly more plum version of my natural lip color. And I absolutely adore this color. The formula is fantastic. I would say, however, with this liquid lipstick to exfoliate your lips and to keep them in good health. I think that is a practice that should remain sacrosanct for everyone. However, when applying liquid lipstick, it is something I would recommend. And I do believe this formula is unique to her. I can't quite place it. I can't quite compare it to any other textures. I haven't worked with a texture like this before, so I find it slightly difficult to compare 
what I think it is similar to in texture, but I very much like it. I think in future I would apply a little bit less than I have today. And of course, I would like to take the opportunity to congratulate Huda herself on the expansion of her brand. I think it's a marvelous thing to be able to launch in more than one country that's contributing to more than one economy. And as I've said before, I'm a great believer in commerce, economy, business, and trade. I think it's a marvelous thing to be able to expand. And of course, I wish Huda and the rest of Huda Beauty the best of luck with their new products, their future launches, and as a growing international brand. I will definitely have to try more products from Huda Beauty at a later date. So that more or less completes today's brand and product focus film. I very much hope that by demonstrating the application and showing you these products, you will have clearance when considering the brand and the products showcased within this film. And I hope that you have found today's film either interesting, useful, helpful, or entertaining. And once again, thank you very much for watching. And of course, take care of yourself. Bye.